<laughs> like, look at the, the EDL march. Um, not EDL march, at the Buff Battle of Trafalgar Day. Mm. When Patrick Hutchinson lifted up that guy, I mm. was there. So it's actually me that told Patrick Hutchinson to go get the guy. Woo! That's what people don't actually Woo! know. So obviously, when I was there, Damn. I was walking, then... Killer, killer, oh, 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 podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Killer Keller podcast serves you right for getting here. It's uh, it's that day, it's that time again, it's the morning. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings. As ever sharing is caring, all right? You have to excuse the f- temperament on my face. I had a bit of a party last night, but who wouldn't, eh? We are live on YouTube, Keller Vision live show every uh, every Wednesday. And uh, you can go and check it on the Keller Vision app as well. Inside the ride is uh, a gentleman who's fastly becoming a spokesperson for the generation, um, the drill generation, the, the, the young people's generation. Um, drill authentic, um, with a lot to say. The mighty drill minister inside the place. Yes, what are we saying? Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. Mate, I tell Boom. you, Bam. you are, you are leaving a again? trail of destruction as you move. Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to do me, man, mm. and highlight what's going on along the way. That's all. Mm. Uh, I think the destruction is just me just opening people's eyes. If anything, mm. I think um, if I was to do nothing, that's more destruction. So, hey, for real. Yeah. What's the vibe um, that, because I'm, I'm going to say it off the bat. For those of you that don't know the drill minister, he is leaving his indentation on a scene which has been, it's been tarnished with, uh, with stereotype that harks back almost as far as old school hip hop and punk. Mm. It, it, you know, it, mm. it's such a, it's such a obvious route that they've gone down to stereotype, um, the, the class of dr- that is drill, isn't it? You know. Yeah, it's it's a age old thing, isn't it? Like if whatever the the people are that are young are involved in or that dr- excites them, and uh, older generation doesn't understand. Mm. Maybe people in their fifties feel really like removed mm. from what's going on, Mm-mm. and they're the people that are making the most of the decisions. So. Mm. They feel like, well, if society carries on like this, it's only going to get worse. But I'm sure when they were watching Elvis shaking his leg and that, and their parents was thinking, this is immoral, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the same thing. So it's just the age old thing of people fearing what they don't understand. That's yeah. literally all I see as, really. Mm, for sure. And, yeah. and again, it harks back to an era of like fucking punk, you know, grassroots blues, anything that society deem as. They demonise shit real quick. And like I say, it's, it's, it's uncanny that, you know, maybe like 30 years from when NWA came out, Public Enemy come out, and it was, put the sensory sticker on. What they've done up till now has been exactly that without any sort of think twice about it, right? Mm. No, I, I think um, there's always a control and expression mm. as long as the expression fits within a certain... Like if it, if it's in a certain world, if mm. the expression is in a certain world, then they'll allow that expression to happen. Yeah, but if yeah. the expression goes against the grain or it goes against um, the laws of society, mm. then they'll try to shut that down. And I don't mean the laws of the land. I just mean the laws of society, mm. like the 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 unwritten laws that we follow every day. Mm. If something goes against that then the powers that be try to shut it down and that's literally what's happening. That's what's going on. Anything. And it doesn't make sense. That, it's, it's bullshit because how is anything supposed to change? How is society supposed to grow? It's, it's a silencing of the class 
a class of people. That's mm. what, and I think what drill does for kids is it um it gives a new energy, not just for music. It gives mm. a new energy to, to culture. It adds it adds a it adds a conversation, doesn't it? You know. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, it people love to say it's a commentary, isn't it? It's a commentary, a commentary yeah. of what's what's happening because um, a lot of the time drill in England around the world uh, it's an insight to what's going on in underprivileged areas. So there's a group called One Four. Mm. Um, mm. Some guys I know, they're from Australia and they're the yeah. biggest group yeah. in Australia yeah, in I've drill. Seen, yeah. And until I saw One Four, I didn't know that those things was happening because mm. I just see like neighbours and home and away and that. <laughs> so obviously <laughs> when you're seeing One Four, it dawns on you that raw, the same way that mm. maybe the Somalian guy or the Polish guy or anybody that's coming from an immigrant background feels mm. in England and how they have to try a bit harder or maybe try to work the system out. It's mm. the same way that the minorities who may be indigenous people of Australia, Australia or, yeah. or they might be the Maoris from mm. New Zealand that have come over or mm. whatever, they're the minorities and they're not the, the majority in power. And you can see how the underprivileged of Australia is the same thing. Mm. So it's a mirror reflection of what happens to those types of people around the world. Yeah. So Drill's just a commentary for our version of it. For real, I love that analogy, it's great. Do, um, do you feel like... I've always seen it as a from, from, from a, on the fence, really, because when I think of Drill, you are definitely putting your stamp with lyrical value which I think speaks to a, a demographic. It feels like you, you're speaking more broadly and articulately to a, a class of people. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel mm. like you've got more integrity um, than most rappers do. Do you know what I mean? Mm. No, it's, it's Is that because, an intention? Was that intentional? Yeah, that, you... that was intentional because um, I wanted it to be seen as though if there's a hundred rappers in a room, yeah, mm and I'm the one rapper mm. out of like the 99 in that room, if the other 99 rappers have to do what they have to do to feed themselves, then I'm happy enough for them to do that. But one of us has to speak for all of us mm. in terms of not speak for all of us because you can't speak for everyone, but somebody needs to sacrifice this want to do these numbers and play the games because mm. somebody has to speak out when things are wrong and without the fear of it affecting their career. Mm. So my whole point was, I was not really giving an F about all of that industry thing because mm. I didn't come to do that. I just come to say what's wrong, yeah. get the message out there and make sure that people are receiving the music and are loving the music mm. as well as enjoying the, the, what I'm trying to give to them. And... As long as that is achieved, the rest doesn't really matter. I'm not here for the awards and yeah. sitting there next to man and chin skinning up teeth. I don't really care about all that stuff. I you're not interested about... in any of the glam. You're not interested. No, I don't in... really care about are you, all that. And you're not that's... interested in the grime. You're not interested in the, the celebrities. No, in no, I'm not really interested in that because all of that is um, it's all to serve yourself. The thing of what the the movement of of Joe Minister, the movement of Judy for Mayor, the whole movement is to help others and. Like I said, if a hundred rappers are helping themselves, mm. one person has to at least try to help others. So that's what my thing is about. Mm. It's about. It's not always about me. It can never ever be about me. Mm. It's about the people. That's why, like, when they ask, "Oh, why are you not showing your face?" or "Why, why do you rappers are ballied up?" Most people are ballied up because of maybe situations mm. or cases or whatnot. Mine is to be. It's not about me. It's about. The people the listening to me. It's mm. about the message. So mm. when you start doing up face guy and doing up, yo, I want to be the f front cover of this new um, mm. um, thing and all of this type of stuff, that's when you're moving into, yo, I'm just trying to be a celeb for celeb's sake. Yeah. You're not actually trying to have a point of view and change something because yeah. there are a lot of things going on yeah. in society that need changing. And these people with these statuses mm. can affect and make an actual change. So Which they, and they choose not to. Did they? Because of the first thing I said, yeah. they're the 99 people in the room that yeah. have to look after their their family and do X, Y, Z. I'm not saying I'm not going to try to look after my family, but I'm saying my, I know that my family would much rather I, yeah. I pursue 
trying to mm. make a difference in the world because that's most more important. That's your legacy. Mm. You can't die with your money, you get me? No, but for real. And I think mm. it's, a, it's actually a very different client. It's a dangerous time for anybody to, uh, to speak out right now. More, I would argue more than ever because there aren't no... The, the stabilizers are off. You can go on any social platform and do it. But there is a lot of y- y- red tape and they'll shut you down. Like, do you care about, I mean, for the greater extent, someone tries to come at you or kill you uh, like, for, for having I, such I, a message? When, when I first signed, my phone used to get tapped a lot. I knew it was like probably government or something. Phone numbers used to get tapped. For real? Yeah, I used to get random, like... Um, How do you know when it's tapped? Is it like a beep sound? There's that funny sounds you can hear somebody on the other land like, when you're talking and that. Oh, fuzzy kind of... Yeah, no, you can hear somebody on the other land. Oh, really? But it's not the person you're talking to. You can hear somebody else. But it's only wow. when they've been spying on you, you answer the phone, but they haven't muted their side of the mic. Mm. So they're listening in on the call, but they're live in the call. They can actually talk wow. as well. Wow, that? Wow. They, they didn't mute it one time and I could hear them talking and they were like, yeah, da, 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 I'm going to lunch. Da, 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 <gasps> I was talking. I could hear them. So I knew from time Damn. my phone was getting tapped. I knew my phone was getting tapped. Not house phone, but mm. mobile. I knew my mobile was getting tapped and that. And then I just look, other little things, you know what I mean? Mm. You just know when when your thing is causing a bit of a problem. But it's, it's, it's n- nothing that I'd have to, I can't sleep about or nothing mm. like that, you get me? There's a, there's a saying, fortune favours the brave. And in, in this context, um, you, you, have to, you have to be brave. You can't just go half. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a bit of stupidity and bravery at a the same bit, time. A little bit, I get you, yeah. Because it's a thing of... Blind yeah, doing it. Yeah, like basically if you, if you put a room, yeah, full of spiders or something, yeah, yeah. and you tell someone that's scared of spiders, yo... Go in that room and they can see the spiders. Mm. They're probably not going to go in no. that room. Mm. But if you tell that very same person, yo, close your eyes and then just push them in the room and then bring them out of the room, they probably won't, won't believe that they were even in the room with the spiders. Yeah, so that's yeah. how man sees it. Man's not going into it um, with the eyes so wide open that I'm looking at all of the flaws that I could make, yeah. all the mistakes I'm looking at, I could make. I'm looking at it so open and so positive that every mistake or or L as you want to put it is mm. a lesson mm. so for instance me discovering from the first time we attempted our mayor campaign when before the corona stopped everything getting the the names for the registry people that have to register mm. across all 32 boroughs mm. doing it previously I didn't know the process in order to do this mm. but man's obviously learned from that mistake of the first time and now we're in process, all right, cool, we're going to oh, go with this attack and da 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 That's cold. But that's a lesson. That's not, mm. that's not an L. Do you know what I mean? It was mm. a loss because we didn't, we weren't prepared in that first instance. But you but worked. You worked with we it. We worked with what we had and now we, we can learn from it. Mm. Yeah, that is... Synergy allows for certain things to happen. When you're doing the right thing and you're pulling in a direction... You know, you, or like you say, there is a eyes half open. Okay, you know, come go from the heart, go with the heart. Then it's mad how I mean, we got a crew inside. Say what's up, crew? What's up? Yeah, like you got a team, and mm. I'm sure it's quite liberating to think that hey, you know, what? I'm doing it right because other people are engaging and being a part of this with me, and it certainly feels like oh yeah, oh, oh most definitely like. Mm. Um, shouts out Sebs, um, shouts out Sylvia, shouts out Becky. Like the team is very, very, very strong. Shouts out George as well. Mm-hmm. The team's very, very strong. Yeah. Crew. Come on. And we we come together once a week. We do we discuss. We look at what's going on. Mm-hmm. I, I try to keep up to date with as much things that are important to the public as possible Mm. as well as things that i have my own gripes and knowledge on Mm. i have to be educated on certain things because a mayor is i'm not going to pretend i know it all Mm. i'm learning on the job Mm. i'm learning what what the people need and doing it the best way possible because i feel somebody that already knows the job knows how to navigate away from not doing the job Someone that doesn't know the job only knows to do the job. Mm. So that's how I'm trying to look at it. I'm trying to look at it as in everything I learn fresh, everything I learn, I'm going to apply that as after I've learned it. Mm. So 
Um, we've been talking to UN rapporteurs. We've been concentrating on housing. Um, we've been talking to people that um, the creator of the proxy address, mm. which was um, a website where if you're homeless, you can get a, a place of um, like not a place of residence, but an address that mm. you can receive mail for either a ba for your banking for. Um, an that's incredible. Like, so, but it, it, it's just an address. It's just because that's the first thing. It's the biggest like, problem. It can, yeah, yeah, you can't get a bank without an address. You can't yeah. apply for a job without mm. an address. So it just solves so many problems. And this company are working with the local councils. They've got a scheme going on in Lewisham right now. They're hoping to expand it to all 32 boroughs. If I get in as mayor, that's the first company, one of the first companies I'm going to be giving a full rollout for the whole wow. sort of city because that would dramatically drop our homelessness, yeah. help people in vulnerable situations, and it's just a positive look for the 100%. future. Then you've got a UN rapporteur that we were speaking with. She was um, teaching me how housing, she was trying to demand for it to be a human right. This mm. is an important thing because for in the world I'm from, it's just like, yo, you got East London, you got South and that, you got gentrification happening in all these areas. Rinsing and then place. you got... Um, Landlords that are not from England majority of the time, they're coming in in droves and raising up the rent, mm. forcing out the young, mm. um, vulnerable mothers, mm. forcing out the people that have lived there all their life mm. and they've grown up with their families there. Mm. And the sense of communities are getting broken. So totally. that's another thing that I'm trying to learn about and try to understand how to navigate to still make the capital thrive because we want to attract potential investors mm. but at the same time not squeeze out the people that make the heart of the city mm. because the heart of the city is the people that don't have the money it's mm. not the people that with the money that make the city it's all the mm. other people in between mm. and once you take those people out then you just got an empty house yeah. just big buildings yeah, yeah, yeah. so we have to look at how to look after all. And the only way that, for me, that starts at the very bottom. It doesn't start at the man that's mm. just making a pound. It starts at the man that doesn't even have a pound. Yeah. Because when you consider him, then you know what to do with the top person. That's right. And he starts from the bottom upwards. I think that's where we've been building the campaign. Bottom upwards, I went with um, a, um, a group um, called Streets Kitchen. Mm. They yeah, operate, hold tight, yeah. Yeah, they operate in and out of Camden and whatnot. Yeah. And... Their whole play, I went with them. And Wait, but explain a little bit more about Streets Kitchen. So no, I'm going to explain right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So dope, 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 dope. Their whole play in um, Streets Kitchen is um, they're a company that basically charity that they go and feed people mm. like on the ground. They feed the homeless that are too vulnerable to feed themselves yeah. or people that are too prideful to, to, to feed themselves. For sure. So they, they go out there, they really they really do care and they don't really like working with people and it's understandable why. Because mm. they're sick of people with broken promises, leaders that have been before with broken promises. Mm -hmm. So we went out there, I saw a majority of the people that they were showing me, um, like I saw an old couple, they must have been maybe in their 70s, 80s, possible 70s, 80s, mm. they were like really old and they were homeless and it Damn. really brought a tear to my eye because you, when you think of homeless people, I guess you just think of like young people or like someone in their maybe maximum 40s. That's right, yeah. You never really think in someone in their 75s, 80s, 79s is homeless and they're like coming for bread and we're giving them like tea and that. And it was really, really heartbreaking because I'm thinking, right, that could be my grandma or my granddad or, you know what I mean? Like, that's anybody's situation and when I'm talking to the people at Streets Kitchen, they're like, yo, it's these type of people that are going to be the first people to die. That's right. In the winter. And I'm looking at this, these, this couple and I'm thinking, they've got each other and that's what they've got. Mm. They've got each other at least, but if one of them dies in the, in, in, yeah. in the winter, it's going to kill the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By yeah, heartbreak, see. just uh, naturally, because yeah, 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 that's yeah. what they've got left, just that's... each other. And then yeah. it really dawns on you that why is there no support system for even our elders mm -hmm. who in a coronavirus, they're yeah. homeless with no shelter out there and the government's not doing anything. And then the London mayor's not doing anything because it's like they're in London. Why they're not aren't they doing anything? Julie? Because why? when it really boils down, the, um, we've got this capitalist system a bit wrong somehow and we're now putting pounds over people. Mm. And... I don't know when it became that, that a human being would probably have like a thousand pounds there or save a person's life. It's, it's coming like the society is mm. pushing you to go towards the thousand pounds and not save the All person's the life. Yeah. And this is um, a crazy notion for yeah. us to be living in. Then it kind of dawns on you 
why this is allowed. It's, 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 a, it's a disgusting um, kind of trend that's passing from government. It's like the government are putting this trend where you can see they're, they're paying off their friends. We've got these companies, we've got yeah. the PPE contracts that, that you know what I mean, masks mm. that never arrived, that money going missing, mm. like large amounts of, of, of money exchanging hands. Corruption. And then um, Dominic Cummings being involved at high levels where him and his friends are receiving the money on the other end. And it's, mm. there, there are people that are connected to him that mm. are part of these contracts. And all of this stuff kind of just shows the public that they don't matter. Mm. And then after a bit, people are going to really, really delve into themselves and say, well, if they don't care about me, why should I care about myself? Then why don't we yeah, do that? No, and then this is, it just becomes an on, on and on trend. And this mm. is what's happening year in, year out. And it's breaking down our society to mm. the point where our society just cares about themselves less and less. Mm. So when you, it's like a kid going to school. If you bully him in his first year, he's probably going to try to fight back. Leave me alone. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. You carry it on year eight, he's going to still be a bit more broken down. By year nine, you've mentally broken him down. Yeah. You're just like, he's just accepting the bullying. That's what they're trying to do. That's what they're doing. You're just accepting the bullying by year yeah. nine. And he's just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Okay. And he's just slapping him and whatever. Yeah. That's how society is right now, where we've been bullied so much. They're like, yeah, we're going to cut your universal credit by 20 pounds. Okay, that's just another... Yeah, yeah, I'm just done. What you... I'm just done anyway. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to... We're not, not demoralised anyone. Anyway. So after this, if you're homeless, you're homeless. We're kicking people out of their homes. Mm. We're not helping you with your rent. Okay, all right, it's just another... Yeah. We're at peace with that. Top. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're just... going to cut all of the benefit system for all of... Um, Disability and da da da. Okay, mm. it's just another. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what just ratcheting it up. So, uh, they're ratcheting it up and see how tight they can take take your, you know. So this is what it is now. Whether it be the vaccine, whether it be whatever, we just accept it now. We don't really question anything because we're tired. We're kind of fed yeah. up. We, we we don't really think there's any answers out there yeah. or any change really happens. Yeah. We've tried it from every angle. This democracy yeah. thing. And it doesn't seem like it works in our favour. So yeah. people are just fed up. So they just allow it to happen now. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. even bother do the, the fight back against the, the most fight back we've seen. It's probably this year with everything with BLM yeah. and, and whatnot. That's the most fight back we've ever seen. And even and they try to stop because of the lockdown. Yeah, and yes. And even that, it took for <laughs> death yeah. to make people actually, yo, yeah. had enough, had enough. But It's, it's divide like, and conquer. All of this shit yeah. is divide and conquer. You know what I'm saying? And I think so. about it, like, from a from, um, historical point of view. And actually, you're probably a really good person to, to muse on this with me, right? When you read into the history books of times that have been bad gone by, Nazism, things like that, and you're reading, the, sometimes you're reading it and you're like, what were people thinking? When, like, how did they, how did it get to this mess in the history? Like, where people were actually so demoralised, sanitised. They were so done with everything that they thought it was okay to do that. But we're kind of in this place. We're in this place right now. And this is the We're going to be in the history thing. books. This is what I'm it's trying to say. being a bunch of mugs. This is what I'm trying to say. This is like, like I've thought about this. Exactly the same thing you're thinking. I've thought about this like logically and I thought, raw. we're a country that right now we had billboards saying, if you don't belong here, go home. Yeah. We had trucks saying, go home. Facts. Go home. Actual truck saying go home. And the reality of that is, is that that's what the future kids are going to remember of us. Yeah. That's what they're going to say about this time that we lived in, mm. that we were the most racist, xenophobic people yeah. of Britain's exact entire history because not only did we do that, we had an era where you had the Battle of Trafalgar this year, which is like going down in history, like an actual clash we haven't had a clash of races since like the 80s Jeez, that is yeah that is insane that's so right. that's like happened in 2020 on top of the fact that you've already got yeah. how much multiple protests like not just for for race things for other things that have been going on this year yeah. um plus the fact that we did brexit which was basically us trying to say we don't want immigrants here mm. which is insane that insane. was like the main driving yeah, force yeah, 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 yeah. and then we tried to throw in the nhs in that argument but somehow the nhs is nothing to do with it anymore yeah, yeah. now so then it's like well and everybody that was was dr drilling this into us like it, it's this way or that way they will disappear they, they're all disappeared well, they're gone. because now they're gone. when we're looking to do the deal Where's and Nigel Farage now? They're, they're, they've all disappeared because now you after your lies to get the job done, 
have, has, has been done and there is no deal on the table and the reality of what we're facing is what we're facing, yeah. we're now stuck with the reality that, raw. we just had a lot of spinsters that, mm. dr- like what we're saying with the Nazi thing, drove people mm. to something that they didn't even know was really within themselves. Because they were uneducated. They, they didn't have all the information in front of them. And they, they drew people off of their fears, which is a very, very amazing tactic to, to rile people up and get them it's activated. Incredible so, and, when and you think about every it. Time. It works every time. Yeah. It works every time throughout history. It works every time. You wait until they're beaten, defeated, almost like a, a, a kidnapped person. You wait until they're defeated, they've not had water, mm. they're dehydrated, they're hungry, mm. they're not thinking rationally. Then you present them with an opportunity to get out of that mm. and they'll take anything. That's right. At that moment, that's what they did to our society. They gave us a situation where at that moment, people just wanted anything to mm. get out of that. So, Control. This is something that is has been very prevalent, that whole divide and conquer. And I, I was walking down, where was it? I was outside Wembley. I was going from Wembley Station, um, outside the uh, stadium bubble that they've created, right, with the box park and all that. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's North West London. I'm a whole tight international crew that are listening. And uh, it was about 4.30. When I got there, it was daylight. When it was 4.30, it started getting dusk, and everyone was locked down. They've all got masks. And I suddenly got this sense of coming out of the infant and bubble when it was daylight and then leaving my meeting out of the bubble. I suddenly, it suddenly dawned on me that, hey, I'm, I'm not in my own hood here. And now I'm starting to think, who are all these people with the masks on? And, and how safe am I? And then it dawned on me, I was like, oh, hold on a minute. This is a tactic. They want the military and they want to solve your problem. Are you a bit nervous about, because everyone's wearing masks and you don't know who, you know who these people are in your own neighbourhood or out of your own neighbourhood? I'll tell you what, we'll bring in some. And it just, I, I just had this air of cynicism as I was thinking. I was like, I shouldn't be afraid. <laughs> just don't be afraid. Don't even let them get to you with that. No. Trust me. You can't, it can't yeah. force Divide no. and conquer. It's just a straight divide and conquer going on right now. Um, so in terms of our campaign going forward, um, we're going to concentrate on maybe policing in 2021 because mm. my campaign has been concentrating on just, um, like I said, the bottom to the top. So mm. it's been so far housing. Um, look, We're going to look at more transport and... Um, things like, um, no, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, I, I, I want to incorporate education in there, but it's not really under the remit of the London Mayor, but I feel as though there's something we can do for the mm. schools in London. Mm. Um, air pollution obviously is a massive thing with Ella Kissa Deborah. Hold tight. Um, Congratulations on that. Like, yeah, RIP and her, yeah, um, and her situation, and obviously, um, God bless on the fact that they. They were they were found guilty, um, the local council, mm. um, of her death due to the fact that she lived on a main road where That's next right. to that school where she went, there was massive traffic. Mm. So she is the first person, obviously, if you don't know, to ever die by air pollution in um, London. Crazy. And it marks a situation of how, where we're going. Mm. We need to be more green and economical. But at the same time, we need to help those that can't afford it. Mm. And at the same time, we have to look at better ways of transport to not clog up London. I was almost late today because of the same fact that although Sadiq's trying to make solutions, making less lanes um, towards major byways is not... That's not a good idea. You're just going to have horse, traffic yeah. going for ages, creating more... Yeah. Because the traffic and the the cars just stood by each other. It's just creating more toxic fumes. Mm. It's even worse than if they were moving. Mm. So it's just like, I don't know why you're just doing... It's just very bad. Madness. We need to at least invest in new um, like bridges and roads Mm. and and like roads that sustain themselves on bridges so Mm. that they're above Mm -hmm. everything or or something. Or and exactly. just go across over London type of thing, like you know that the A forty type of thing. Or yeah, 100%. we need to look at other solutions, maybe an underground system of of, of cars that go underneath London, mm-hmm. like just above the underground or something. Mm. But we we need to take less traffic off of the top of mm. London and put it somewhere else, like That's a right. and and figure out how to um, really green space our air mm. without creating more traffic. It's, it, and it can be done. There's plenty of cities around the world that have done that. Because the bike lanes is amazing. Yeah, amazing. But at the same time, 
the bike lanes, increasing bike lanes right now and making um, car lanes smaller is just going to create more tension and make London much harder to get around, yeah. which is um, not... It's not it's not ideal no. for like a, a single mother picking up her kids or something. It's just like nah, exactly. Mm. It feels like a rat ru- rat run, you know, when you're mm. driving around like and you're going this way to go that yeah. way to go back on the one way. It's, just, it's a bit mad. Mm-hmm. So we need to sort all of that out, definitely. It sounds fucking awesome, and Thank it sounds you. like a lot a lot of big dreams that I think you've got to throw up there and challenge those challenge the people that are making the decision and bring it to your campaign, you know. Um, the the drill aspect, the drill aspect. How how do you th- how do you, how do you feel? Um, it relates to the kind of people that you're you're having to be faced with. Do you, do you think they do you, do you find that they they that it's relatable to to them as a as a genre as a as a face as a as a representation? Uh, what do you mean by that one? Yeah. I mean like. Take, for instance, you know, I'm 42 years old, right? And my average... I always thought, uh, you know what, my my gener- generation ain't going to be like the other generation because we've been brought up on X, Y, Z, and we know the more... It's so beyond me how a lot of my people I went, even went to school with suddenly just fall into this pit of uh, comfort zone, you know, this kind of flat cap and slippers kind of culture and it it blows my mind that they're not alert to this um you being so young and being vibrant and being i've got this thing and i wanted has that been a challenge for you um like anything obviously to get people to gravitate towards what you're doing Mm. people want to go their way so the best way i've achieved that is like what anybody would say is just that by doing your own thing Mm -hmm. just literally just having a tunnel vision and kind of blocking out anything that's a distraction towards your goal because mm. ultimately the self-belief and the goal is only achieved by you mm. it's like the mo- you could have the most talented person in the world but if they haven't got the work ethic and they haven't got the drive not nothing's gonna, yeah nothing's ever gonna happen so mm. that's that's how i feel with what i'm doing it's like there's a million people that could be doing what i'm doing and i would hope a million people mm. could do mm. what i'm doing but to activate the other million across the world that are like me, they need to see me doing it. Mm. So I need to always have that in mind and always push forward and break the boundaries again and again and again to redefine what it is possible. Because mm. I think until I've come along, I think there's always been a kind of a ceiling on what is achievable, what you can and can't push for. Yeah. And now it's just that, it's the, that the doors cool. have been blown yeah. off and now it's like, all right, cool. Let's go for mayor. All right, cool. Let's go for UN after that. All right, cool. Let's go for da-da. Let's just not stop. Yeah, let's yeah, just yeah. keep going until they tell us that we can't. And then, all right, cool. Let's try getting with Elon Musk and go to the Mars. Boom. Let's say, yeah, yeah just, let's just do it. See, don't stop. Like, just don't stop. Yeah. We just got to keep going, keep going and pushing the boundaries on what we call this life. Yeah. If anything. Mad tenacity. You got mad tenacity, bro. Like, I love it. Um. As a as a beatboxer myself and, a, and an artist before this, I was all up in the disciplines of, of street culture, the the athleticism of it. And this is what the majority of this podcast is about. You're speaking to uh, you know con- uh, connoisseurs of the of the uh, of the, the Boom, yeah, bam. Oh, you know like graph breaking, sound clashes, MCs, mm. all that, right? DJ in the works, and I've always been absolutely fascinated about the drill flow it's just so f- it people think it's a it's a bona fide uk thing they didn't know they don't know the export and import of how this thing kind of merged and made its um it became its own organism I've, i i i'm so fascinated define for me because your lyrics that ain't oh like, no define drill yeah you mean. okay drill you um Everyone's always gonna say Chicago reference of yeah. Chicago Joe. Chicago Joe is true. The Chicago Joe um, is a facet of the birth of of what I'd, we could argue is the scene of it. Mm-hmm. But I think Joe of the UK is like a cousin to that Joe, but it's like a distant cousin mm-hmm. because the reason why it's a distant cousin is because it has its own stepbrother which I'd say is like an older stepbrother is probably like the scenes before where his bass line, grime, da-da-da. Mm. Those scenes, 
they teach people how to speak with an English accent. They talk, teach people to be comfortable with it in their own thing. Mm. And then when you look at the producers now of Drill, these are producers that, man are kids that are growing up on dubstep, funky house, um, garage, grime. UK hip hop as well. Yeah. Bass line, like niche, yeah. all of these musics from the, for the drum and bass, the, the, all of these sounds from the UK, mm. when mixed together, like if you've grown up on all those sounds in the last like 10 years, it's impossible to sound like an American producer because there wasn't no dubstep there like that. Mm. There was, but the, the American hip hop producers were not making Facts, dubstep. Facts, true. Do you get it? Yeah. There was no funky house there like that. Yeah. There was no house there was speed no drum and garage. Bass, there was no. So all mm. the influences mm. for the production, mm. they've got like a big canvas. They can draw on rolling bases from dubstep in their in their in their drill. Whereas the Chicago guys are just doing like this this tick 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 like drumline like um um American university drumming thing. They used to do that thing, but our thing's more like. Like, man will put a mad bass that's from, like, um, drum and bass in there. Yeah, yeah. Man will put just, like, a mad drum at the beginning of something and just mess with it and mm. do a sample like we used to, like people used to do before or something. But your style, though, musically, I there's a real... There's a, 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 a commercial structure to it which you don't hear in a lot enough drill. The, the, the sounds that you're using, mm. these are emotion... They are, they're all emotive. Where a lot of, do you know what I'm saying? So, although I get where you're coming from, you come from a very distinctive. Yeah, no, no. With, with my thing's a different thing. With, with my thing, it's just like, it's, 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 I always look at my thing as like a university final piece. Yeah, oh, he said it. So, you That's see, like, true. when you've got, what's that thing that when you do your end of year uh, the, um, dissertation, dissertation thing? Yeah. So, my thing is like, everything of mine is like, that is the dissertation of that thing. That's so that sick. is the dissertation of that thing. That is the dissertation of that thing. Mm. So each thing, it has to be, if not an expert's opinion, it has to be the beginner's guide. That's because a one. Oh. It, expert's opinion is means that, yo, I'm speaking from a confidence. I'm saying this with my chest. Mm. Beginner's guide means, yo, I'm myself learning this. I want you to come on this journey of, of growth with mm. me and learn this thing with me. It's not me saying I'm the expert. It's me saying, yo, did you know this? Did you know this? Let's learn some more. Like, yo, there's only two ways of doing it. So yeah. my thing, like I said, my thing's a progressive thing. So man have to feel that when they've heard an album of me or an EP of me or a track of me, that you're not the same person you was by the end of the tune. Mm. You picked up something mm. or you feel a bit cooler because, raw, without even trying, you learned something. And it's, that's, it's, it's insane to think that Someone like you hasn't come along sooner in in British music. Just by that, you give it a new twist. I was almost getting a little bit sanitized myself by the direction that grime was going. Uh, I mean, I there are complete exceptions to the rules in that. I'm not here to dog any genres or anything, but uh, the conformity that started to play out with grime, it was one of like hey, it's starting to sound a little bit American now. You kind, of, it's you know. Yeah, gatekeepers, the, the bank. I don't know there's a hardcore section there, but it was starting to kind of go off and then you've arrived with this thing and it feels so vibrant. And I love the fact that you don't care about any of that. You're just like on this and I, it's, it's, it's inspiring. No, this, the industry is always going to be the industry. I'm not here to play the industry game. That's why they try to keep me in the fringes. Don't really care about that because who will hear the message will hear the message. Mm. What will be What will be done will be done. Mm. Who God gives, no man can curse. So I just got to do what is right by the people mm. and the people will have me. That's it. That's mm. ultimately, we are only here for the people. No man is an island. Mm. So I just got to do right by the next generation because the next generation is what's really important. It's not really about a man in his 20s, man in his 30s, man in his 40s, man in his 50s. It's about a man that's not a man yet, that's a little boy or mm. a little girl and they are facts, yep. basically 12. Yeah. They are 13. Yeah. But within the next 20 years, they're going to be at a mad manager and director position or mm. they're going to be the new CEO of blah, 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 a new mm. tech company at 21 or mm. whatever it may be. They're going to be the new leaders of industry. So if man's not charging and trying to 
make sure that their minds is right, mm. then we are all effed because the world of us having a greener world comes from them. That's right. Don't really come from us. Like we can do all the changes now, but for it to be up up kept and for yeah. things to continue, it, the, the little three year old right now has to grow up in a world where it can actually it, he can actually facilitate mm. that. So it's about the next generation and that's the most important thing. And when I used to be young and people used to say that, I used to think, oh, that brother's just saying that because you're washed. Mm. I'm not going to lie. Mm. When brothers used to say, yo, it's about the next generation, I used to think, so what happened to your yeah, generation? Yeah, 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 your yeah, generation's yeah. washed then. Totally, but yeah. the reality is, <laughs> when you get there, you realise, my generation is washed. Yeah, yeah. Like, it is actually washed. <laughs> so it's mine. Man really. like, man's got Boris as the Prime Minister. It's, yeah. it's already washed. I've been mean, growing so, up on Red Bull and 9-11, man. Like, that's, hopefully, that's it. like the three-year-old or two-year-old, that's two-year-olds year, years old, right? Now yeah. he's not gonna have a Boris when he's like 25 or something. Yeah. They're not gonna be a Boris that's two years old right now that's being born. I'm hopefully yeah. there's not a Boris being born right now that's gonna be the Boris. You know what I mean? But oh. we've already got a Boris, so yeah. it's like man has to deal with that now. Yeah. Get rid of this situation, not just him, but the bad. whole infrastructure, the whole corruption that's going on. We yeah. have to just just like get through this period as a country, get through mm. this period as a community. We have to get through this rebuild ourselves when mm. they're talking about build back better that just pisses me off build when back better but build like the Tory government keeps advertising build back better we're going to build oh, back I better see. Yeah, yeah, but how sure. can you build back yeah. better when you ain't got nothing yeah. so what are we building back better with yeah because if i had a house before this pandemic now you've you've ended my furlough you've taken away my housing benefit and now you've it's just, just buzzwords isn't it yeah it's just it's words so now words. you're building back better but now i'm homeless so yeah. how am i building back better yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm building back better but i've been laid off because yeah. now you've made um, top shop man mm. say yo you man didn't um, come in to save me so I'm letting go of all of these pensions and all of these um, yeah. top shop jobs you get me so when all of those people 3,000 or however many, many people there's going to be across the country are going to be unemployed with no pensions now mm. Why no pensions. imagine you <gasps> your pension's cut and you got Boris on the TV saying we're going to build back better yeah. you're thinking my man's taking you for a mug mm. so obviously this is where we just got to get through this period I think mm. and then ultimately we just got to build back better, but build back better with the youth. Mm. We've got to ensure that the youth don't ever have a Boris again. Yeah. Don't ever have this, that when they say, oh, we'll never let fascism or Nazism or whatever they call it come back again. We can't let these type of politicians yeah. or this type of politics ever happen again. Because yeah. this is some real yeah. selfish, self-centered politics that is... They're kind of, um, say, centrist, but I don't know what the mm. hell to call this. Yeah. Like, it's a mad politics they're doing. And it's, it's not, I wouldn't say it's directly far right wing, mm. but it's a crazy politics that they're doing that doesn't actually care about individual people. Yeah. And it cares about corporations. Now I'm hearing Rishi Sunak is richer than the Queen. So now I'm thinking, why go on yeah, for you, man, yeah, over there? Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. that? Well, how's Rishi Sunak richer than mm. the Queen? So what's actually going on? So... How's a man? How does that happen? Yeah, yeah, how's a man that's Richard the Queen infiltrating as though he's a normal person and he's not declaring his money? The guy has not been declared his money for three years. So, that's, Rishi Sunak, you're telling me about my job and how much you're going to give me, yeah. but you ain't even declaring how much you're making for three years. These times your wife has got yeah. shares in all of these companies that they're, that they're handing out the contracts yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then this thing's looking mad. You're get, and Rishi Sunak, you're getting a contract from Amazon for 960 million a year. How do you keep sane in this p political sp space that you're going into? Like, you, you're a man of common sense like me, and we all we want is a better... It should be obvious when you're looking at it, you know, off paper. It's like, well, hold on, this is... How do you keep a level head? You, you keep saying by finding out more and more and more of the corruption till you realise that the British politics is constitutionally backwards... Um, it's, it's, it's racist at, at most. It's, 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 mm. it's, 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 um, I'd even say, it, 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 I'd even say that it's, um, it's misogynistic yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, there's a, a lot of things within this British politics that is wrong. A lot of things that is wrong on so many levels and it's rotten at the core. Mm. And the, the public don't know that it's rotten at mm. the core. That's why it keeps it alive. And that's why they keep it Because the oblivious. greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing you it doesn't exist. So if you don't believe Ooh. that this is happening, then then how are you going to ever solve it? It's mm. not solvable because people mm. don't know that the largest exporter of weed is our country. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The largest exporter of weed in the world is Britain. You do realise that? Madness. They export the most marijuana to the world in uh, uh, anywhere. 
This is the largest exporter of weed, this country. That's insane. But yet it is illegal here. But we are making the most money off of weed in the world. Cheeky fucks. Then you've got other situations where wow. you have to look at Theresa May's husband was directly involved in that, directly getting money from that. Like, this is a, this is a thing where this is not hidden. None of this stuff is hidden. It's out there. You can go see it. But when you see it and you realise, hold on, so you're locking up the man there for this, but your husband's yeah, yeah. he's actually Papi Chulo. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what's actually yeah. going on out here then? Then you start looking deeper into things like we are the biggest um, tax avoiders in the world in terms of people are coming here to um, yeah. to do dodgy do, dodge tax and to do um, fraud. This mm. is how can we be the largest exporters of, of fraud in the world? Like people, so then you're thinking, wait a minute, if everyone's fraud in England and England's just doing all this fraud, yeah. like who's making money out of this yeah. and why? Who's allowing it? Where is that but, money? <laughs> so then, then you start to realize that it's, it really is rotten at the core, and yeah. there's a lot of things that are allowed because, like I said, pounds over people. Yeah, but the thing is, people ain't, you know, they're sitting there watching Doctor Pimple Popper. They'd rather be watching something that is completely a dis- tool of distraction. Mm. You know, they, to, reading too deep in anything. Do you think? Do you, do you think it? creates a sense of empowerment or do you think it becomes such a hole that people can't actually they can't breathe within it it's too it's too much and they they feel helpless and they you know what i mean there is that isn't there there is a sense of that still there is a sense of that the people are ready to rise up now though i think so yeah from um we've done a numerous amount of things um we set up my when I announced my mayor candidacy. Um, we did it at a university um, in central London. A massive turnout, and Amazing. a lot of questions were asked from the public, which really helped me to start and formulate my manifesto. Because my manifesto is, it, I have got an outline of it, but at the, along the way, it's been built. Um, by the people, for the people. So the people are adding to it rather than me writing down what I believe the people need. Lovely. I'm yeah. letting the people kind of tell me, um, say like there's three points of view. I'll look into those three points of view, whichever gets the highest um, interaction or uh, tension, that mm. obviously must be the priority uh-huh. because men and women lie and numbers don't. So that lets you know where you should be heading towards mm. and go in that direction and then tackle that problem as opposed to the other two, which obviously might, must not be as much of a priority. Mm. Get round to those later. So in each area, I'm attacking what needs to be handled, what needs to be done because I'm focusing on what the people are telling me is the problem. Right. So... Um, so you really are the people's yeah, the, 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 my thing can't be done without the people the people are navigating everything that I'm trying to do it's them f- through them that the ideas happen do you oh, know what I mean great. and um, we've got um, I just recently met up with these guys called Steel Warriors so Steel Warriors are these organisation charity that um, they're building gyms nice. all um, on all the parks um, so how they're building these gyms is like when I say gyms, I mean like steel bars, like yeah, they're doing yeah. push-ups and stuff like that, and um, like d- like almost jungle gyms kind of thing where people can just like exercise, yeah, yeah, army brilliant. training type yeah. of thing. But how they're making them is they're making them out of reused knives. So the same knives that the kids are handing in Great. or the police collect, yeah. they take those knives and bolt, melt them down love and it. then reinvest that into the community. So... Yeah. I love that type of shit. And that's the type of people that should be receiving money from um, the the mayor's office, should be getting backed because it's a community initiative that grows community. Anything Mm -hmm. that grows community and gives people a sense of community can only be be um, an effort of good because community is being lost in today's Mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. Um, Hence why next year when we look at the police and that, man's going to look at, how we can increase the the, the um, ethnic minority numbers in the police force? How we can have local police and get local back to police, a local man. a local Bobby on the beat? Yeah. How we can look at um, retraining a lot of this 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 maybe the training program and how the police are handling the public or the mm. the the the, the, um, the, public. the minorities that they're encountering yeah. can be retrained because maybe that is the, a big breakdown and retraining the police to be normal people and not talk to people like police because the whole thing of people getting their back up is because they they see an authoritarian and they feel like this is some guy 
He was a policeman. He obviously might have been bullied in school and now he's exercising his power on me. That's how people I think see it. That's what everyone they perceives it as, isn't it? That's what everyone sees it as. Mm. Oh, you're that guy that got bullied in school. Now you're Mr. Big Bollocks. Yeah. So you want to take out your anger on me. Yeah. But I wasn't the one that broke your pencil and put a donut in your head. You get me? So why are you taking it out on me? But that's how man see it. So you, the tr police thing needs to be retrained and we have to look at Stop getting these policemen from Bath and making them come in for the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then go to Peckham and then just hull up man on the wall and all yeah. them things there. That's all nonsense. Because they're natives, yeah. they're, not, they're not in the You know what I'm saying? They yeah. make it go back to, oh, Mr. Officer Diddley or mm. whatever his name is that lives down the road and my man's mum knows mm. him. And you know one of them ones? Have that type yeah. of policing because that type of policing means that my man's in the community. People, when it's a situation where there's a known paedophile or something, they're going to feel, right, let me go to that police officer, I can trust that, I can mm. trust him with this information or mm. whatever it is, you get yeah. me? But when you got these type of pe um, police that's just coming in and terrorising the community yeah. and beating up little boys and it's that. It's not a one. Like, that, that type all. of policing, it's not going to encourage anybody to want to go to you for even Judge the worst crime. Shit, so. Man will just handle the... the the injustice within the community themselves rather than go to the police because yeah. the police don't seem like a viable option. And the right. more stuff comes out about the police and the more the um, opinion of how the police perceive mm. the people they're dealing with comes out. Like, look at the, the EDL march. Um, not EDL march. At the Battle of Trafalgar Day, mm. when Patrick Hutchinson lifted up that guy, I mm. was there. So... It's actually me that told Patrick Hodges to go get the guy. Woo! That's what people don't actually Woo! know. So obviously when I was there, Damn. I was walking, then I was walking now, then obviously everyone's like, Judy, 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 come this way. So I was walking, there's a massive crowd behind me. Wow. So I was walking because the police director was, I was basically, I was the one leading the march. Mm. So I led the march from Trafalgar all the way to Waterloo. So it was like, well... I think they got the numbers got to about maybe a thousand four hundred. So it's like a thousand four hundred people marching with me, and I'm leading them all the way across to Waterloo. When we got to Waterloo, people started breaking off because they saw some guy getting attacked. They saw some little black boy getting attacked because some EDLs had been redirected by the police as well, okay. and they had m m gone to Waterloo, but there was no mm. Black Lives Matters people there yet. So mm. when they got there, they was beating up on someone, then there was a clash, then the police came, then they separated everybody. When they separated everybody, they clocked that bare people are following me, so the police directed me towards, um, what's the, there's a museum there. Uh, is, it the, is it the Tate? Tate, yeah, Tate, so, yeah. The, the, the Tate? Yeah, I think have, so. Is it the Tate or is it... No, there's a um, there's a theatre there um, next to there. Um, there's a theatre in, in that area. Like, right. Um, right next to the... Um, do you guys know what it's called? National Theatre. And the Hayward Gallery. Yeah, yeah, I think, right. it's, it, it, right. I think it's there. I think it's there, yeah, yeah. the National Theatre or whatever, yeah. So, man's gone towards there and then that's where that guy who's on my man's shoulders, that's where he was, he was on the stairs. But he's there and he's shouting some abuse at some black kids. He's going, mm. you effing this, you need this, and bam, bam, bam. You, yeah, go back to your own country. You're like, and he's, he's, he's drinking, drinking, drinking on the bevy and that. Then the, the black goes, what? What are you talking about? How are you going to talk to me like that? Then he just slapped him. So he's just slapped this black boy, yeah, like crazy. Then obviously, he is. have you ever seen Pantomime, yeah? When you see you're watching a pantomime and then everyone, you're, I, I remember watching yeah. in primary school and then we're watching a pantomime and then the guy's looking around and then the crowd goes, he's, he's behind you. you. So basically, yeah, <laughs> the guy's like slapping this black boy, but there's like me with like a thousand people yeah. behind you. So the, the, it's so this crazy. This was just going down and yeah, down and it down. Was so nuts. So then the, some girl, some black girl that wasn't the black boy that he slapped that was there, she goes, oh my God, you better just get out of here and just run. And then he's going, yeah, behind me, yeah. He's oh actually done, yeah, God. behind me, yeah. And then that's when it's just gone mad. It's like a bad movie, was, Yeah, it was like a mad movie. It's just gone mad. It's just gone mad. But obviously, because I'm at the front of the crowd, I've seen the crowd run past me to just go and f demolish this guy. So the crowd, I'm just like, no, 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 no. Because I knew this one is death. This guy He's is going to die. He's literally going to die. There's, there's, there's too many people yeah. to even stop. He, they, they're seeing you attack this little kid, so they're just going to literally gonna deal with you. They're going to absolutely nail so then, you. I see, I looked around, I just see this like, this guy looking like Hercules and that. So I just see, I said, yo, yo, my guy, my guy. 
you're the biggest man here. You have to do something. Yeah, 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 you have to yeah, yeah, do yeah, something. Yeah. So I just dragged him. Then he's gone. Then some next guy, like the shout out, this guy Raspect. He was mm. like a big leader there, mm, like mm. Doing, controlling a lot of people there. Raspect, shouts out to him. He's like made the guy make a barrier. He's made like a barrier around the guy. So like Raspect and these other guys have made like a barrier around the Patrick Hutchinson oh, wow. guy. And then they've used that barrier to like get him out of the mm. area like, and then push him like towards somewhere safe. And Dons. Then, and then obviously like someone, got, I've told like a girl, like go get the feds and that, innit? like to make sure that they can look after him and that. Yeah. But then even that, I was thinking, wow. right, look at that. No, no, trust me, because obviously it's not about, wow. the day's not about fighting. The yeah. day's about it's the worst protesting thing that for something. Yeah, it's about, the day's not about that guy getting a beat up. That's not important to mm. nobody. No one cares about that. Say, yeah. That's just, even the people that are going to probably try to kick his head in, they're going to feel like shit when they mm. go home, because why did you just do that? You yeah. know what I mean? So, we, at the end of the day, we're all in England together. What yeah. are we doing? No one should be fighting each other. Like, at the end of the day, but why I brought that story up is because I was talking about the police and that guy's an ex-fed. Mm. So my man said, after, when I saw his actions and that, it scares me to think, so what is he doing on the force then? Mm. Mm. If, yeah. this, if you're slapping this little black kid and you don't think no one can see he you. He was a fed. You, you was the people locking man up. So how oh. many men are like this guy mm. that's on the force right yeah, now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that Patrick Hosses is not yeah. saving. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah. I'm trying to say? So it really dawns on you. Oh my days! You, these are the Stephen Lawrence man. This that's is, right. This is where. This is how this thing actually happens. Yeah. Like, these are the guys. That's this is, right. These mm. are the feds that hide it and 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 hide all the information and make sure that yeah. information is not passing hands and 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 switching little names and 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 um, incidents on the report. It's toxic, that. isn't it? It's toxic. Toxic, isn't it? bro. So we need to, like I said, it's rotten at the core because. There's an infrastructure that su it suits each other. Like mm. this, this um, poisonous in, um, institution is supporting this one, and then like maybe the Crown Prosecution Service have got a bit of corruption in there, but the police is supporting their thing and they're backing up their thing with their thing, and mm. they, it's just all corrupt, bro. So we need to get to wow. the, the the gist of it. Mm. And the, like I said, what's the best way to stop the corruption? A new generation Let's when they do. come through. And they have the morals, and we we set from the outset yeah. that you can't do these old practices no more. That's when the, it goes out with the old and in with the new. Because exactly. there was obviously a judge somewhere in America that was like, "Raw, we need to keep a, um, this apartheid going on. We can't have blacks and whites mixing." But mm. there was obviously a judge that grew up and said, "Nah, mm. I grew up on a farm with blacks. I don't want that." Yeah, yeah. So that guy changed the narrative of what the other guy was thinking. That's what we need to do now in That's this society with with what's going on. We need to change the narrative with the next generation and keep pushing to the to the to, to, to the Hell older generation yeah. that yo, you might we this generation might be fucking up right now. The mm. older people than us are fucking up right now, but we can do better in it. Yeah. We can change this around, but we, yeah. we, we can only do it together. Like, you know what I mean? That's bro, I mean uh, it's so inspiring to even hear you talk. And I, I know it's been inspiring for the guys out there. How do we get involved? How, how do we get involved? Um, you contact us at julieformare.co.uk, mm. julieformare.com uh, Julie for Mayor on the Twitter, um, Julie for Mayor on the Instagram. Just get at Julie for Mayor. The team's there. They're mm. responding twenty four seven. They don't even take two seconds to reply. Like they instant everything instant. Like That's they're so onto sick. it. Send us information if you've got information about your local area. Anything happening in um in in your constituency or where you are that you feel you want us to highlight and you're around London. We'll come there. I want to hear stories from real people in London. Um, I recently did a story with um, a lady that has disabilities. Um, and she told me like the real things that, that people are going through, man. Mm, mm, mm. She told me that what it's like for a person like, you know, with, with like some form of disability in London and how hard it really, really is, and like how the depression she went through and how they really make you feel worthless. Like mm, how they mm. really how the system really makes you feel worthless. Mm. So Hearing stories like that means there's other facets to living in London yeah. that I might not know. I need to hear it from the standpoint of um, a person that's a fresh immigrant. Mm. I need to hear it from the standpoint of somebody that's maybe um, a minority, as in transgender, or somebody that's, you know, all these different facets. Message, I need yeah. to hear it from these all these different facets because... How are you living in London? What's your London looking yeah. like? I need to know, understand your London so I can make it better for you. I can't Man. understand if I can't see it. I just so. feel like communities, for, you know, community areas, things that I'm being redeveloped and rehoused and, you know, for rich people to 
take stock of. You know what I mean? Like, it, it has to start. Remember, like, Grenfell happened here, you know. Bro, so, I'm telling you. I'm telling on. you. You know what I mean? Shit don't, shit, shit don't change easy, but you've got to make a stand. You've mm, got to. That's it, man. Just take, 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 take. Well, not takes one person. It takes one stand that mm. creates more, more yeah. um, ripples in the water. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do mm. know exactly what you mean. So get involved, people. Yeah? Do a minister inside the house. Anything more you want to add, sir? Um, no, thank you for the for the for the time, my guy. My guy, thank come you. on, yeah, yeah, come, come on. on. I was checking your things out before I come here. See the little the beat boxes and that you man, you man hit out Killer <laughs> Keller for them for them. I'm gonna probably put a little skit of your thing on come my team. Come on, yes. Yeah, let's see, let's see if we can get that rolling. That's what definitely. I'm saying. I'm gonna yeah. be rolling with the ministers, is you know. I know like, you can re- redo some drill beats with them with them, um, them mouth there. You get me? I know you can do some. Yeah, the first happening. That's it. Um, and then when you do uh, sit on that uh, that throne of, uh, of greatness, when you're in power, well, more power. I'd love to have you back in. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. That'll be a blessing, man. Yeah. Boom, Ladies, bam. Boom, done in in the in the back of the net. We are killer killer podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. A big shout out to Drill Minister and the team. Um, you know what to do, sharing is caring. Don't talk to any strange ones. You stay lucky, people. Peace.